Let's talk about carbonation. Carbonation in beer. You know, I get the question all the time, how long should it take for my beer to carbonate? Well, the industry standard, or the normal answer is always, well, about 20 days. But I tell folks, look, man, I know you're in a hurry. I know you're anxious. You've got 48 to 54 bottles in a five gallon batch. After 10 days, give it a try. Pop one open, if you like it, drink the rest of them. You know, if not, wait 10 more days, it'll, it'll be carbonated. If you follow the instructions correctly, it'll be carbonated. But there's two ways to carbonate beer. Uh, one is uh, a natural carbonation, which is introducing priming sugar uh, at the time of bottling, and the other way is forced carbonating. And that's just putting the beer into a keg and forced carbonating it with a CO2 uh, canister, CO2 bottle. Uh, but I'm going to give you a couple of hints. Here's, some, here's, here's a trick for you. The next time you do bottle your beer, if you want to know exactly when it's done, bottle all your beer, and at the same time take a small, you know, one of those plastic water bottles, and open it up, fill it with beer, and then squeeze all the air out of it, place a cap back on it, and place that bottle next to the other bottles that you have at room temperature or at the same temperature you fermented, uh, and let that set and you'll notice that that bottle will start to expand. That's the CO2 being produced by the yeast that are eating the sugars. When it expands enough to fill that bottle back up and make it a little stiff, it won't be as hard as a Coke bottle because Coke is highly carbonated, but when it fills that bottle up, you'll know that the rest of your bottles are full of CO2 as well. So that kind of gives you a visual gauge as you're carbonating. Uh, or you can just do the old, the math, just wait 10 days. 15 days, 17 days, whatever the case may be. But this will give you a good visual cue. Now, talking about natural versus forced carbonation, um, most of your wheat beers are going to be naturally carbonated, so you'll always notice that there'll be a sediment on the bottom of the bottle. And I get that question all the time as well. George, why do I have a sediment on the bottom of my bottle? Well, it's because you've introduced sugar. The byproduct is going to be ethyl alcohol and CO2. Uh, once the yeast eats, there will be yeast excrement, the yeast itself, and any other byproducts produced will settle to the bottom of the bottle. They're purely harmless. As a matter of fact, they're desired in a lot of beers. A really good Hefeweizen, uh, some people will shake up that and pour that back in as well because it gives you that really dark cloud. But you'll notice those always are normally in the bottom of a Hefeweizen's or wheat-based beers. And then, so those will be naturally carbonated. And your other bottles that you see no sediment at all in the bottom of the bottle, those are primarily commercially grade and they've been force carbonated, then they've been introduced into the bottle and then capped. Both of those processes work and they work extremely well. So you will always have or normally have if you naturally carbonate, you'll have a sediment in the bottom of your bottle. If you force carbonate, you can avoid that sediment in the bottom of your bottle. So I offer that to you as just words of wisdom and don't forget the little tip and trick we got with the plastic bottle works extremely well. It just gives you a visual cue. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.